Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Kat. I'm a wife, a homeschool mom, and an avid reader. It is the end of August and time to start turning my attention to what is coming in September. And the first step of that is to talk about the new releases that I am excited for coming out in September. The first one is on September Third, and this is Matt Haig's The Life Impossible. The um, synopsis says, when retired math teacher Grace Winters is left a rundown house on a Mediterranean island by a long lost friend, curiosity gets the better of her. She arrives in Ibiza with a one-way ticket, no guidebook, and no plan. Among the rugged hills and golden beaches of the island, Grace searches for answers about her friend's life and how it ended. What she uncovers is a stranger, I'm sorry, what she uncovers is stranger than she could have dreamed. But to dive into this impossible truth, Grace must first come to terms with her past, filled with wonder and wild adventure. This is a story of hope, and a life-changing power of a new beginning. As someone who has had those life-changing new beginnings, this really uh, draws to me in that, but it being a Matt Haig, I definitely was uh, alerted into looking into this one because I love the Midnight Library. I'm really hoping that the Life Impossible Gives me some similar vibes. Jumping to September 10th, TJ Clune's Somewhere Beyond the Sea was a auto pick for me. This is the sequel to the beloved um, the house, be house in the Cerulean Sea, which is about a magical house, six magical and so-called dangerous children, along with their caretaker and, in Cerulean Sea, the government official whose job is to look into these group homes. But somewhere beyond the sea is Arthur's story. A magical house, a secret past, a summons that could change everything. This just these three sentences really just drew me in, and I am excited to see what T.J. Klune has for us, because I don't think I've read a T.J. Klune book where I didn't bawl my eyes out. Another auto buy author for me is Leanne Moriarty, and her new book is Here One Moment. Aside from a delay, there will be no problems. The flight will be smooth. It will land safely. Everyone who gets on the plane will get off. And almost all of them will be changed forever. Because on this ordinary short domestic flight, something extraordinary happens. People learn how and when they are going to die. For some, their death is far in the future. Age 103 and they laugh. But for six passengers, their predicted deaths are not that far away at all. How do they know this? There were more interesting people on the flight, the bride and groom, the jittery, possibly famous woman, the giant Hemsworth-esque guy who looks like an off-duty superhero, the frazzled, gorgeous flight attendant, but none would become as famous as the death lady. Not a single passenger or crew member will later recall noticing her board the plane. She wasn't exceptionally old or young, rude or polite. She wasn't drunk or nervous or pregnant. Her appearance and demeanor were unremarkable. But what she did on that flight was truly remarkable. A few months later, one passenger dies exactly as she predicted. Then two more passengers die, again, as 
she said they would. So no one is thinking this is simply an entertaining story at a cocktail party. If you were told you only had a certain amount of time left to live, would you do things differently? Would you try to dodge your destiny? Like I said, Leanne Moriarty has been an auto buy for me, especially after reading Big Little Lives, which I think we all know her most famously for. And I have never been left disappointed after finishing one of her books. So hopefully this one does live up to the hype. On September 17th, another book that's being released is surprisingly another auto by author for me. And that's Laura Dave, The Night We Lost Him. Lingham Known was many things to many people. To the public, he was an exacting, self-made hotel magnet fleeing his past. To his three ex-wives, he was a loving, albeit distant family man who kept his finances flush and his families carefully separated. To Nora, he was a father who often loved her from afar, notably a cliffside cottage perched on the California coast where he fell to his death. The authorities ruled the death accidental, but Nora and her estranged brother Sam have other ideas. As Nora and Sam form an uneasy alliance to unravel the mystery, they start putting together the pieces of their father's past and uncover a family secret that changes everything. Now, I have eagerly been awaiting a new Laura Dave book because I had such a great time with the last thing he told me. And I think while I wait for um, the night we lost him, I will be checking out Laura Dave's backlist. Continuing on to September 24th, Aaron A. Craig's The Thirteenth Child will be released. Hazel has always known she wasn't like the rest of her siblings. A thirteenth child promised a way to one of the gods. She spends her child waiting for her godfather, godfather Merrick the Dreaded End, to arrive. When he does, he lays out exactly how he's planned Hazel's future. She will become a great healer, known throughout the kingdom for her precision and skill. To aid her endeavors, Merrick blesses Hazel with a gift, the ability to instantly deduce the exact cure needed to treat the sick. But all gifts come with a price. Hazel can see when death has claimed a patient. When all hope is gone and is tasked to end their suffering permanently. Haunted by the ghosts of those she's killed, Hazel longs to run. But destiny brings her to the royal court, where she meets Leo, a rakish, rakish prince with a disdain for everything and everyone. And it's where Hazel faces her biggest dilemma yet, to save the life of a king marked to die. Hazel knows what she is meant to do and knows what her heart is urging her toward. But what will, but what will happen if she goes against the will of death? I really enjoyed both The House of Salt and Sorrows and The House of Root and, Roots and Ruin, so I have high hopes for this one. And as soon as I finish the e arc, I will let you know what I thought of it. So in a month of auto by authors, of course, Brandon Sanderson has a new book out, and this one is called The Most Boring Book Ever. In this humorous epic adventure, a boy is on one hand having a very ordinary day. He does his math homework, his chores, and takes a nap. All while a surprising adventure unfolds around him involving pirates, dragons, and other 
unexpected perils. Now, I might be wrong, but I believe that this is Sanderson's first picture book, and I am so excited to introduce my first to third graders to the wild imagination of Brandon Sanderson that all of us have fallen in love with. And there you have six books that I am really looking forward to reading uh, very soon that are being released during September. One thing I did notice as I was recording this that all of these are auto buy authors for me, meaning that when these authors release a book, I immediately want to buy their books. So I'm going to ask for your help this month. If there are any new releases from other authors than these ones that you think that I might enjoy, please leave them down in the comments because I'm always looking for new authors to explore. But until next time, I'll see you later.